I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And in this video, we're gonna be talking to you about why you love someone who hurt you. This is a lot more common than you would think. And I know it's a little bit counterintuitive because you're thinking, if someone hurts you, why don't you leave? Yeah, and if they love you, why would they hurt you? Mm -hmm. So many of us find ourselves in situations where the person that we love hurts us not just once but again and again and if you're finding yourself in these kind of patterns you better take a look at what's going on within you and understand what's keeping you with somebody who's hurting you so much exactly so in this video we're going to talk about that and the psychology of what's going on with people that makes us stay stuck in situations with people that are hurting us on this channel, we talk so much about attachment and that's exactly what's at play here. Mm -hmm. You know, attachment is something that is extremely powerful. I know you all have heard the phrase that we hurt the people that we love the most and that is absolutely true. You know, with attachment styles, we are most vulnerable with people that we are most attached to. Yeah. And when you are vulnerable with someone, you are opening up yourself for a lot of potential hurt. You know, somebody knows exactly the right things to say or do that can get you in the spots that you're the weakest. So a lot of times we end up in the closest relationships with those who hurt us the most because of that. And if you do fear abandonment, if that is one of your greatest fears, maybe you have a more anxious attachment style, you are more likely to tolerate more hurt and pain from someone just to keep them around. And this can be something that's really confusing, but for a lot of people, it is better to be with someone that hurts them than to be alone. Now we know, you know, outside of the situation looking in, as objective third parties that that is not the better situation it's better in a lot of scenarios to be alone to be in your own peace than to be with someone who drags you down or brings you pain but you know with our bodies we are connected with someone our bodies are attached to someone and that can be something that's really difficult to let go absolutely you might be in a situation where you grew up in a home where you were mistreated. And so it feels familiar to get mistreated by your romantic partners because that's what love felt like growing up. And we're often drawn to the familiar. That's why a lot of times the people that we're attracted to, they really remind us of the parent that gave us the most difficulty. <laughs> And so you gotta work, work through those things because if you don't, you're gonna find yourself continually drawn to similar kinds of people. So if you felt the pain you're going through before at an earlier time in your life, when it happens again, it's like you're unconsciously trying to understand it, what's going on there and in a way fix it. It's almost like you're trying to fix that hurt from a long time ago with your current romantic partner. Like you're trying to mm -hmm. fix this issue that you had with your mom or your dad with the person you're with, but it doesn't work like that. But in our unconscious, it does. Mm -hmm. In our mind, deep within us, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, and for example, let's say you grew up with a parent that constantly made you feel like you are not good enough. In adulthood, when you find a partner that makes you feel that same way, man, this partner's making me feel like I'm not good enough. 
your unconscious sees that as a challenge. What if this time I can make this person think that I'm good enough? Would that heal all of the pain that I've been feeling my entire life? Yep. So there's so much unconscious drive that happens in these types of toxic relationships, relationships that are damaging, and a lot of reenacting. A lot of times we are replaying the scenarios that we lived as a kid in our homes. Yeah, and I, I literally just did a call today with a guy that he told me, I'm not drawn to the secure people. It feels too boring and plain. And, and the woman that he's drawn to, I mean, she was exhibit a lot of narcissistic traits. Uh, I would say she was at least a dismissive avoidant. He mm -hmm. definitely thought so. Um, and she had a lot of serious issues with mm. parental uh, abuse and being mistreated growing up. And so he feels like he's trying to save her. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, what is going on with me that I'm so drawn to somebody who treats me terrible or it doesn't really care about how I feel? Yeah. And in a lot of these scenarios, we do see the rescuer role come up and the caregiving role come up. Uh, he talked yeah. about that with me, the rescuing. Yep. Yeah. And it's so ironic because we're sitting here thinking, well, you're the one getting hurt. You're already tolerating enough. Sometimes you are getting hurt by this person, but you are also trying to save them, trying to rescue them from their crises or their problems constantly, or trying to caregive for them. You know, this is a person who consistently maybe verbally abuses you, maybe emotionally abuses you, maybe even physically, and you find yourself caring for them. You find yourself going above and beyond for a person, not only just attached and barely hanging on to the relationship, but pouring everything into it. And so just like with this person on your call, I'm assuming that some of these things were from previous hurts and, and attachment wounds mm -hmm. from his earlier life. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he and many people are trying to kind of relive this play, that drama over and over again because it feels familiar. You know, there's a quote that says we would rather choose a familiar hell than an unfamiliar heaven. Mm. And so I think that's what a lot of people do is, you know, being with somebody who treats us good feels weird, it's awkward, it's uncomfortable. So we'd rather go in that play, that drama that we know, mm -hmm. because that feels comfortable. Like yeah. I'm, I'm used to this. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm just thinking of the analogy of food because my mind is always on food. <laughs> but it's kind of like growing up on a really unhealthy diet. And then as an adult, you don't know any better. And then you just continue to, you know, repeat those those eating habits and those patterns. And, you know, sometimes we can look at different cuisines and we're like, oh, that, that looks weird. I've never heard of that food or that dish. Mm -hmm. It can be like perfectly healthy, well-balanced nutritional meals. Mm -hmm. You know, just like somebody who's has an insecure attachment style looking at the way secure people are living their lives or the way that, you know, other people in the world are, are relating. And it's so unfamiliar and so strange. And, oh, you guys actually say sorry to each other? You guys actually are nice to each other? Isn't that weak? <laughs> What is this? <laughs> right. So don't be emotionally xenophobic, okay? Be willing to try new things and step out of this pattern. A lot of times we get caught into these cycles of harmful relationships, damaging relationships, because we, first of all, don't know what else is out there. We haven't been exposed to it. Mm -hmm. And second of all, we're scared to. You know, we haven't taken that step before, and it's easier to choose the path that we've been down a million times, even if it's filled with thorns, rather than a path that we is that we don't know what's you know there. That's uncertain. It's like an avoidant who feels uncomfortable when they're loved. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had many conversations with avoidants that when they feel this feeling of love from someone, it makes them want to run away. Well, you have to get used to it. Mm -hmm. You have to get used to that feeling. It might be a bit smothering, but if you allow it to happen, at least a little bit of, or at a time, you can grow to feel at peace with it and actually enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm also imagining, I'm on an analogy roll right now, <laughs> but I'm also imagining a, a hurt puppy. 
do you ever see these videos of like animal rescue? You see a hurt little puppy and somebody who is like working for the rescue will try to like gently and tenderly pick up the puppy to you know take them to care and the puppy will be growling and really angry and not really sure what's going on and confused and scared. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how it can be with humans too, you know, with adults and with love and with relationships. Sometimes we get scared because we don't know what love feels like. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Another big reason as to why people get stuck in the cycle can look a little bit more practical. And it can be because someone is providing something for you. This is something that I've personally worked with with clients, where there is somebody toxic in their life that is maybe very consistent. You know, they're super toxic, they're super harmful, they're very mean, but they are reliable. You know, they continually bring in, let's say, income. Let's say they continually are helping out with the kids or other chores or other tasks. So they benefit in some way by having this harmful person around. Mm. And this is a sticky situation because to me, this says that there aren't enough community resources that you are relying on. I understand that it probably is nice to come home after a long day of work and have someone there who's prepared a meal or who has you know, taken some good care of you, but you have to do a cost benefit analysis and think, is the pain worth what this person is providing? And with things like emotional damage or, or further damage, you know, our stance is always better to protect yourself and build up a strong community that can help fill in those gaps. So if you find yourself in a situation like this, you really want to get help for yourself. You really want to find some other resources and support to help you transition or at least not be so dependent on somebody who might be mistreating you or abusing you. Mm -hmm. And look for a local therapist in your area, particularly one that specializes in trauma, because they could really help. Yeah. Like I had said before, building up those community resources can be super helpful. Seeing if there are local organizations that can be helping with whatever your needs are. I know it's not an easy process to break free from these types of relationships, but small steps starting somewhere, you know, can can help. Absolutely. And gets you more comfortable and used to the idea of change. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. So hopefully this video has been helpful to you. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, you can do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I am here whenever you'd like to chat. Just click on her name at the top of the website to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.